Just go on. I can't. I can't do this. God. <laughs> God is the God that His Word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's not yeah. just back yeah. for Elijah yeah. and Elijah or those in the New Testament. God's Word works yeah. if we believe it and we stand on it and we really believe it. So those Bibles got in. Those people were so happy. They had some meetings there. And the people didn't want to stop. They went on for hours and hours and hours and all night. And my husband said, well, you better ask them if they want to keep going on because they'll be tired. Oh, no, we want to keep going on. So they went on and on and on. And when you've been in darkness, once you feel that presence of God, you really, you don't want to get out of it. You want to just stay in it and stay in it. We're kind of spoiled here in the... U.S. We, we come to church all the time, and there they're not allowed. They're not allowed to have Bibles, but they have Bibles now. And then learn the Word of God and be happy and prosper. Their souls will be prospered. They will be blessed. Because one, one man that doesn't have much sense said, I'm going to take them in anyway. And the natural is not sense, but when God tells you to do it, then you have to obey and step out and do it. But you need the prayer warriors, you need the intercessors, you need the people who go, you need the people who give the finance to go. Everybody is a part of the body. And not one is more important. If you, if you miss one step, then it wipes everything out. You can't go ahead and do what God's called you to do. We need everybody and appreciate everybody and love one another in Christ. Amen. And God, God has just been blessing, and He's been so many places since we've been here, and many miracles, and in Australia too. A lady got healed of cancer, and she came in from another country, flew in, and, and wanted prayer. She heard, "Oh, there's a man of faith there," and some lady paid her her ticket and came, and he prayed and, and took a lot of time with her and prayed. Then the next time he went over. The same lady showed up again to give God the glory that she was healed. Uh, young woman, breast cancer, and God healed her. And I love to hear healings of cancer because the devil scares everybody with cancer. Yeah. And God is stronger than cancer. Amen. There is no Amen. such Amen. thing as a, as a, as a um, disease that can't be healed. There's Amen. no such thing as that. Not with Jesus. He'll, he'll mess it up <laughs> for the devil. <laughs> Not for the devil, but the devil. But God, but God is so good. My husband recently, every once in a while, I start singing, God walks the dark hills. You know that song? I'll say, but if Jesus walks the dark hills, they're not dark anymore because the Lamb is the light. Amen. So he's, he's there for us. God, Amen. God bless everyone. Amen. Brother Amen. Fitzgerald, he's been praying all day and studying, so... I don't know. You better watch out. Amen. Give, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Praise. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So lift your hands up and give God the thanks. Give Him the glory tonight. Father, we worship you and thank you tonight, Lord, for your Shekinah glory. Your presence is in this place. Thank you, Lord. God, you're up to something mighty in the spirit tonight. Yes. Thank you, God. You're an awesome God. My, my, my. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. We praise you. Amen. Paul said, I speak in tongues more than you all. And I'm glad that there are people around here that speak in tongues. Hallelujah. Now the shame of the gospel of Christ. I thank you, the gospel of God. Thank you, Pastor Meyer, for having it back with you. We enjoy ourselves here. Uh, the Spirit of God, we feel very strong. God is doing a new thing. And I read that today where he said, I'm going to do a new thing now. So this is the day. This is the time. Isaiah 43 and 19. And I will do a new thing now. God said, now is the accepted time. This is the day of salvation. Now faith. Not just faith, but now. Now faith. You've got to have faith right now. Now faith is the substance. It is the platform that you're standing on. It's the substance of faith and hope for. Amen. The things you haven't even seen yet, that you're uncertain of and you don't know about, 
It's the proving of the things that you haven't seen and you don't know and you have no discerning of. I can tell you tonight that God is in this place to bless you. And I'm glad you're here tonight. And I'm glad to see every one of you here. Praise God. Praise God. And so uh, we just returned from uh, Australia where we saw in the great Southland of the Holy Spirit a mighty, mighty revival is going on. Smith Wigglesworth, when he, he left her the last time, he told the church. He gave a word of prophecy. When you see God moving here in the great Southland of the Holy Spirit in Australia, that's a sign unto you that my coming is just at the door and it will happen soon. My Lord now, there's revival going on around the clock and churches are open. They've never had such a revival going on in Australia and it tells me the great man Smith Wigglesworth prophesied right that Jesus is soon coming back. And that's why we've got to run, get airplanes, carry the gospel. We've got every means, we've got every way to carry the gospel to all the ends of the earth. And so, Hallelujah. praise God, we're carrying the gospel. Amen. Praise God, the ends of the earth. And so, there are great and mighty things that are happening. We praise you tonight. Not because, not because of me, not because of you. But I'll tell you, it is because of the man called Jesus. Yeah. Amen. That's the one it's all about. And when I come here, it's not to lift up myself. It's not to praise or give glory to me for anything. But all the glory for every miracle that I tell you about in advance, I tell you, give God all the glory. Because I don't take none of the glory. Because I can't do these things. I don't know how to do them. But I can take you to where the man lived. I can take you to his house. I can ring his doorbell and I can say, here's Jesus, he'll help you. I can take you to where he lived. Can you say amen? I can take you to where he lived. And so we're very excited and we just ask the Lord, amen, to use us in a mighty way here tonight and tomorrow night. And I hope by tomorrow night you will call many friends. And this place tomorrow night will be so full of people, amen, that it just packed out. Amen. And I'm believing God for that. That many, praise God, will receive that spiritual renewal, that spiritual touch that they need from Almighty God. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand back tonight. Praise God.
because of your love for us. Sit 
with God, no thing shall be impossible. A good place to start, isn't it? Amen. How many of you know that faith is what pleases God the most? Amen. It's not always easy, but it's what pleases God the very most. Strong, bold, determined faith. Strong faith, not weak, watered-down faith. Bold, strong, determined faith. If you're taking notes tonight, I'm going to give you some things to write down. I want you to remember them as long as you live and don't ever forget it. That God is only one kind of a God. He's a faith God. He moves when he hears faith-filled words coming out of your mouth. When he hears you calling him your Lord, your victory, and you call Jesus my healer, Jesus becomes what you call him by faith. When you walk the floor every morning, for a half hour, hour, you get up and you walk the floor, you say, Jesus, you're my healer. You're my miracle worker. Amen. You are my financial provider. I'm not going to worry on these bills. I give them all to you because you will pay my bills supernaturally. Amen. What you call Jesus, your provision and your provider, he will become that to you. What you call him, he becomes to you and he puts it in action. Amen. And so God is an action God. Faith without works is dead. God wants you to put some legs to your prayers. He wants you to put some action. He wants you to go out and be led by the Spirit and do something about what you're praying about and ask God to lead God and direct you. Don't just say, Lord, give me a good job and lay in the bed all day and just snooze and every day say, Lord, I know you're going to bring me a job now. No, you old lazy thing. There's two kinds of people that God does not bless. God does not bless lazy people and God does not bless stingy people. If you're liberal with God, and you sow to the ministry, and you continually sow for your future harvest. Yeah. You know, people don't understand about giving you tithe and offering. They don't understand that this is not, you know, how that you, uh, how God takes money from you, but it's how God gets money to you. It's through your giving. People got it all mixed up. All the preacher just wants money. No, takes money to operate the ministry for sure. But God can do without yours. He can do without mine, but he'll send somebody to support the ministry. And, amen, I want you to understand that taking an offering in the church is not the way God is going to get money from you. But I want you to understand clear that this is God's way of prospering you and getting money to you. If you ever understand that principle, you will be a mighty giver from then on because God's wanting to get money to you, but as long as you're stingy and you're blocking the flow, he cannot get that money to you. But when you give, you open up the channel and then God can flow money and resources to you because you're a giver. And so keep that in mind because God is a wonderful Lord, a wonderful giver, and he gives, praise God, his anointing, he gives his blessings on us, and he's our healer and miracle worker. Amen. And uh, we are seeing mighty miracles all over the world. And, uh, and over 73 nations now, the Lord has taken me. And uh, he always provides. Sometimes I'm one hour before I leave, and I don't have any money for my ticket. And so you can call it what I've been called before crazy. I've been called crazy so many times. I say when I write my book, I'm going to call it Wild and Crazy Faith. Why not? Because it is a little wild and crazy when, when you're telling everybody I'm coming uh, to your country and, and you have no, no money for a ticket and you're leaving in one hour. One hour you're leaving you have no money and no idea where your money's coming from. Uh, there has to be a God somewhere looking down and sees you stepping out by faith. Yes. And any time you take a step like that by faith, let me tell you that God's going to get out there on the limb with you. God's going to do something about it. Can you say amen? amen? And so my suitcase is all packed and I get in my car and I'm riding around my town and, and I'm praying to God, where's the money coming from? Lord, I don't know what to do. I got one hour before I have to leave. I feel like a crazy man driving around the streets of Berwick and I'm going, Lord, I don't know where the money's coming from. I got to have a lot of money, Lord, for this ticket. Where's it coming from, Jesus? 
I don't know, but God, I promised them I'm, I, I'm coming there. I, I, and I told them, and they're looking for me, Lord. And I got to leave in one hour. Amen. Yes, I got to set up to pay at the airport, but Lord, I don't have the money to pay them at the airport. And I need cash, too, besides. You know, they won't, they won't cash. They really won't cash. There's an old-fashioned meeting in an old-fashioned place Where some old-fashioned people had some old-fashioned grace As an old-fashioned sinner I began to pray And God heard me and saved me in the old-fashioned way And God heard me and saved me in the old-fashioned way